Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass and we've got beautiful conditions today and we're headed out on the water. Come along, this is gonna be a really fun day of summer bass fishing. Today should be one of those really fun summertime days. To start off, it's hot. It's actually not too bad now, but we're headed for mid to high 90s and we're already 96% humidity. Uh, it's cooking. So I'm expecting later in the day for these fish to get very predictable around shade. Uh, you know, docks, grass, getting out deeper, out off the edges of the breaks, things like that. Uh, but here first thing in the morning, there should be some fish up and cruising. So we're, we're not gonna complicate it. We're just gonna start out fun fishing. I've got an underspin in my hand. That's where we're going to begin. There should be some fish just moving up, milling about. Later on in the day, we'll be able to pinpoint them a lot easier. But for now, we're just going fishing. Him. Another one grabbed it. That was cool. Hook one, lose him, hook another one. <laughs> First little guy on that underspin. Number two. This guy, he's a Tennessee River bass for sure. His face is all messed up. He's been caught before. This morning, you know, these fish, they won't really position well when the light's low. What I mean is later today when it's super hot, they'll be gathering in shade. They'll be gathering in predictable places. But right now they can just kind of move around and feed during those lower temperatures, lower light. So I'm out on the edge of a flat, and these fish are just milling around out here. So I'm throwing, that's our tactical mini underspin. I've got a three inch Largo shad on that. That profile, it's a very aggressive tail kick, mimics a thread fin shad extremely well. I want a lot of movement, a lot of flash, thus the blade, uh, just to draw their attention while they're up and feeding this morning. Oh, he came off. Throwing that Z-Boss 22, just deep cranking. Again, I was throwing up on a flat. I've, I've jumped three, four flats since then. Now I'm out, that sun's starting to get up. Fish are starting to back out. It's right where it rolled off. That's where that fish was. Nice one, little better fish than we were catching this morning. We'll take him. Thank you. 
another one on that crankbait. I love this time of year once that sun starts getting up, those fish will group up, they're getting predictable. We're making the same cast over and over and just continuing to get bit. All right, those fish seem to have cooled down. That was pretty fun though, getting a little handful of them, just one after another after another. Sun's getting up now, which is my cue to cover up. A lot of people don't understand why Tim and I wear masks and long sleeves and I wear pants in the summertime, even when it's crazy hot. And it's about sun protection. I don't like wearing sunscreen all day, every day. I do sunscreen my feet because I don't cover them. I stay in flip-flops. But I just don't want sunscreen all over my body day after day. And that's why you see us wear sun gear all the time. You know, specific sun shirts, mask, gloves. These things are essential to not burning. And then more than that, it's not just about burning. It's remarkable. If I come out here for a full day in the heat and I've got sunscreen on, but I still take that beating sun on my skin, especially if I've got short sleeves on, by the time I get home, it's all I can do to eat dinner and go to sleep. But on the days where I'm fully covered, pants, all that, sure, I'm tired at the end of a hot day, but I can eat, hang out with the kids, maybe edit a video. You know, it's, it's amazing how much more energy you have if you physically cover yourself rather than take that beating sun. So we're always wearing this stuff, but we don't, we don't always highlight it or explain what we're doing. Like my pants, they are paper thin, but they block that UV light. And it's just such an important thing. You guys need to take care of yourselves. If you haven't tried covering up, it seems crazy if you've never done it, right? Especially when we're near 100% humidity. But I'm telling you, it makes such a difference in the way I feel. In the video description, you know, we'll be linking the baits we're catching these fish on, the rods we're throwing. I'll link some sun gear for you as well. Some of the specifics that we wear because it really does make a difference. With that, that sun is starting to get up. These fish seem to be bunching up tighter. So I think here pretty quick, we're gonna be able to start fishing more predictable places. I'll be, I'll be running shadows essentially. And, Shadows come in a lot of forms, right? That can be underneath docks, that can be grass, that can also be going out and fishing deep water edges where that light penetration, you know, the Tennessee River is not that clear. So you don't have to get very deep before the light doesn't penetrate and hit bottom. So those fish will back off, they'll move up, feed in the morning, and they're kind of scattered like they are right now or, or were. And it's difficult to target them, you just cover water. But as soon as that sun gets up and they, they back out to get away from that direct sunlight, they get into that shade. And once that happens, they're a lot more predictable and you can have a really good day. I love how these fish group up. So I swung on a fish, loaded up and he came off. He must've just had the tail. So I just slack it, let it fall. And this one, I mean, it's gone down in there. Come on, give it up, buddy. He swallowed it. Back to that underspin, just switching between baits and you haven't been seeing because I haven't been catching, but I've been throwing the shaky head, I've been throwing a bigger swim bait, top water, but they just seem to be on that crank and on that underspin for now. We'll see if that changes as we go through the day. Ooh, missed him. Got him. <laughs> that is a good time. This one, same deal, just choked it. And that tells me that there's competition, right? Somebody bumped it and then that one came in. 
and just inhaled it. It's competition driven. You can tell a lot of times, like even if you're throwing a worm or a jig, if you're working that thing, this is just something I've found through the years. If you're getting those bites that just eat it, like dong, or they just pick it up, tick, that's one thing. But almost every time, if you're getting the bites that like grab it and run, like charge towards you and you go to swing and you already have slack line, that's almost always competition that's almost always more than one fish headed for the same bait and one of them snatched it and ran and if you keep that in mind it's amazing how often you can throw back and get that other fish or get into a group of fish you can tell a lot just by how they're eating the bait not just whether or not you're getting bites but whether they're tapping on it whether you're getting bit over and over whether they're just freight training it gives you a lot of information Come on. a little better fish so what I've done now is I've come all the way out to the edge or the ledge on the Tennessee River and there's basically no flow this morning very very low flow so these fish are definitely out here where they're current driven they're definitely going to be lethargic so I picked up a shaky head and uh, made a couple of casts got one short strike couple more casts caught that one and it is a little bit better quality fish we have not gotten into big ones at all this morning smaller fish but fun fish uh, but it's interesting that that first slow moving bottom contact bite was a little better fish we'll see if that was random or if there was something to it Another one on the underspin. You know, we got into that one flurry of crankbait fish, got a handful of bites on the shaky head, but for the most part, that little finesse underspin, that seems to be the ticket today. For the most part, we're catching smaller fish. I think what I'm gonna do is just try something completely different. Maybe get up on some shallow docks or in some grass, something night and day different from what we're doing. See if we can get into some good ones. And if not, I might just pull out some bait finesse rods, downsize even further, and just have a blast with this size fish. We'll see. Oh, missed him. So we made a quick switch. I went to the top water, started running shadows. I went with a different bait than normal. This is a Duo Realis Pencil. It's the 100 size. It's a very loud bait. What I was thinking is I'm gonna start here, but I might go up and fish some bluff walls too. Those bluff walls, those fish will tend to sit deeper in the shadow and I need to call them up. So I wanted a really loud bait. But just right here, first few casts, I already had one blow up and miss it. That little guy ate that top water like he was a giant. 
big old explosion back there in the shadow. <laughs> Thanks, little buddy. Uh oh. <laughs> As promised, I grabbed a bait finesse rod. Tighten that up a little. Cash and ultra light to be exact. And whatever I just hooked is not a tiny little bass. <laughs> what have we got here? Oh good lord. That's a 20 plus pound catfish on the ultra light. This could be a while. <laughs> oh man. I went back to the underspin. Couldn't help myself. Look at this. The rod is so bowed up, the line is starting to pass the blank. Golly. I went back to the underspin. I went even smaller. I went down to an eighth ounce. Put a little 2.75 swammer on it so I could throw it on the ultralight. It worked, but I'm not sure it was a good idea. This thing is just bulldog and it's just glued to the bottom down there. That's a big catfish. Putting all the pressure a little ultralight can put. When I said let's go to the BFS, so these fish become fun sized. This, this wasn't what I had in mind. There's our bait. I think this fish is a lot bigger than 20. Oh my gosh. That thing is giant. Crazy. On the ultralight. The slimy, goopy mess. But that was pretty awesome. Oh my goodness. Oh. There's four of them. Four of them. Oh, I ran out of room. He crushed the top water while I was looking up here at this cliff. We just went down this wall with the top water. Lots of bites. They're just slapping at it, just short strikes. So I turned around, picked up the underspin, and that took no time at all. But I did go to that Cashin 6.8 Ultralight just to make it even more fun. 
That's such a good time. Rod is so soft. <laughs> oh man. Tell you what, that ultralight Corrado BFS 10 pound braided line, 8 pound fluoro leader with that little underspin. That's fun. Nice one. That's a quality BFS fish right there. Thank you, friend. That's awesome. Oh, missed him. Missed him again. Got him. Gotcha, buddy. Thank you. I made a switch just for the sake of fun. I went to the Abu Garcia Zenon. So that, this is a high-end combo. This is the 7-4. Uh, I'm sorry, it's the 7-1 medium light, but it's moderate, so it's very soft. Typically what I would throw my little BFS crankbaits on. Uh, and then they're Zenon LTX reel on there, straight seven pound fluoro. And I only got to make a couple casts before that one tagged it three times. You know, I don't know why the fish today all seem to be similar size and they're nice quality fish, but there's no like giant giants, right? And for whatever reason, because it feels like a day where I could get a good one. It's hot, the fish are definitely grouping up but for whatever reason, it just doesn't seem to be happening. So instead of beating my head on the wall, I've adapted my gear and I'm just having a ball. I mean, every one of these fish is just ripping. It's just a good time. I love fishing in the heat. And let me back up and say, I don't enjoy heat. I don't enjoy heat. I don't enjoy humidity, but the fishing this time of year on a hot day can be so good because it's predictable the fish pile into those likely places right i mean i'm i'm fishing about a 30 or 40 foot area here and i seem to be getting bit every few casts there's a lot of fish around and it's just the first place that these fish were able to duck to deep water so they've come off a flat and they've grouped up there and that makes them very predictable, which makes them very catchable. And I will stand out in some heat when I can get bit over and over and over. Thank you, friend. Golly, that one hit it hard. Oh, they were fighting over it. Another one came up. Wow, that's awesome. That's a nice one. Thank you, friend. Another one came right to the surface and was trying to pull the bait out of his mouth. No wonder he hit it so hard. They were competing, trying to get there first.
There's one on that compact pitching jig. I got a short strike. I'm guessing that's the one that took the claws. And then immediately following, got hammered. Got him. That just made sense. They were eating that underspin so well. I stuck with it, but it shut down. They finally had enough. That group of fish had just, anything that was gonna eat the underspin had eaten it. So I cycled through a couple baits, nothing, nothing, nothing. I thought I'm gonna pull the tactical crank. The reason why I was throwing that Azuma earlier, let me put this back out there. The reason why I was throwing the Azuma earlier with that crankbait, it's all about reaching the fish. And we fished all sorts of different depths today. Those fish I was catching on the big crank were in 20 to 25 feet of water. But this group of fish is in like eight to 14. And that's perfect for the tactical crank. If I put the Azuma in here, it'd just be digging bottom so bad it just wouldn't even work right. So I quick, Grab the tactical DD, couple of casts, stick a fish. We're just cycling baits, trying to keep this group of fish active, catch as many as we can before we call it a day. There's one. I don't know if you guys saw or not. I was working that thing like a jerk bait once I got it down. Just twitching and popping it. And that one smoked it. That's fun right there. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. There is no shortage of fish today. We have blasted them, but I'm not expecting to suddenly catch an absolute monster either, and I am cooking out here. So we're gonna go ahead and call it. 
today was really fun. You know, it turned into junk fish and we caught them a lot of different ways from a worm to a jig to a topwater to the underspin to the crankbaits, deep crank, mid crank. That was awesome. But definitely the two standouts were the little underspins and the crankbait. Uh, you know, the Tactical DD, what we just wrapped up with there at the end, Tim and I designed this bait to be a cold water crankbait. That's what we designed it for, for burn, 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 pause, burn, pause, reactive strikes in cold water. The fact that it works so well in summertime is just a happy accident, but we will take it. I've seen it so many times where that thing just crushes in summer, especially on fish that have already been beat up by other baits. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap it up here. In the video description, I'll link you all the baits, the BFS gear, the spinning gear. Today was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed coming along. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.